stranded in the open, dried out tears of sorrow, lacking all emotion, staring down the barrel, waiting for the final gates to open, to a new tomorrow, moving with the motion, following the light that sets me free. Thank <laughs> you. 
I got like, I might as well just sip some water first right now because I know this shit about to be happening. I'm so Baltimore, LA getting wetter than a harbor. So how we be getting from my grave? Cause my whole city stopped from a cruddy town, front you pounce and rob you. Drag on you, drop a bag when I crash the Mondaman. So be more, get mellow, sign to Brooklyn. Only gut and pot, know the pain that I took it. Y'all watch the why, nigga, we live the why. Hey, they is murder for power. No 50 a job, I'm writing murder with no ink on no tails from Earth Gotti. A, B, this is body bust up like John Gotti. See his spirit to the sky like BWI. Nothing above eyes set for my eyes. Eyebrow, the God, stick the blood of Jesus to wind down. Put a O in your cap, all that cap and dummy. Go and need a book of matches to match your gummy. Something in the city, your sin overlapped in money. Trumpy line, my city gon' need armies and tanks. I bet the bank, these punchlines hit harder to tank. I put my life behind these bars, better grab me shake. I got that work up on the block like Benny Blanks. I'm on the avenue, show me gratitude. Pull up, diamonds dancing like the avenue. You was never there, so you never knew. You know I double up two times two Four one oh, that's who I'm signed to It's dummies in my city, we ain't mine fool So no fees in the liquor from the slow go You pay me half, I front you half for the low low I be in your chick box like I'm UPS I give a god day, uh, so you know she blessed Bust down a lick with Philly niggas like I'm YBS We dodging bullets every day, how you gon' challenge us? Man don't know me for real. I wrote a letter to Ho. Yeah, me know me for real. Stokey know me for real. Tell him broke the deal. This that Percocet set flow with that fat in our field. Get money. ACP, you see this? Look, if it ain't official, Dana J. Prima Donna news. I don't even want to see it. There's more, more for you, more for us. Rain, children, rain all night long. Didn't it all? Didn't it all? Oh, my Lord, didn't it rain? Didn't it rain, children? Rain all night long, didn't it all? Didn't it all? Oh, my Lord, didn't it rain? Mm -hmm. You can't run from it, you can't deny it, you can't pass it off. It's your call. God knew what He was doing, He knew who He was calling, and He he expertly and, and intricately detailed every aspect of your life, your being, your persona, your psyche, your physicality, everything about you from the texture of your hair to the color of your eyes to the way that you laugh to the fingerprint on your thumb. Everything is connected to your calling. And until you walk into the fullness of the thing that you were created for, you will find yourself frustrated. Your call. It's different. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this. Hey. You ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. I'm a one on one. Don't need to call me twin. It's young. Hey. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this, but hey. you ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. Yeah. I'm a hey. one on one. Don't need yeah. to call me twin. Wow. Wow. It's young. Hey. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this, hey. but.
He ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. I'm a one on one. Don't need to call me twin. Wow. It's Sean. Ooh. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this, but you ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. Yeah. I'm a one on one. Don't need to call me twin. Wow. It's Sean. Ooh. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this, but. You ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. Yeah. I'm a one on one. Don't need to call me twin. Wow. It's Sean. You ain't fucking with me. I don't know who need to hear this, but. You ain't fucking with me. It's only one young. Yeah. I'm a one on one. Don't need to call me twin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I got to go there real quick because I ain't here in a while, man. I got to go to my boys real quick. It's called Metal Rose. Let's go. We got a lot of content, baby. It's going to get live in a while. Y'all know how we do. Because you know they ain't fucking with me. So, 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 so some people saying they couldn't hear it. Like, what? Y'all really couldn't hear that? Jesus Christ. When you got so many devices to work with at one time, you know, people don't want you to be great. They don't want you to be great. They don't want you to be great. Uh, so I'm going to play it going out. I'm going to play it going out. Y'all know I'm playing it going out. So can y'all hear me out there? Yes, sir. Or no, sir. Or can I get a hell yeah? Which one is it? Can y'all hear me? Yes or no? I just want to know if y'all can hear me. What must I do? Cause I want you, 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 yeah. What must I do? But that metal rolls be slapping, man. With that Jodeci feel. That joint be slapping. So y'all can hear me? Okay, loud and clear, loud and clear, loud and clear. Let's get ready to take off real quick. Shari. But for all the haters that thought we was going to sit here and wait for you to get on board, we are leaving the station in two, three, four, five, six, nah, we up out of here, see ya. So I just like saying that. I just like playing around. Y'all know how I like doing it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But shout out to everybody that's here. Shout out to everybody that's here. Dream Team is in the building. How y'all doing? Ah, I see. I I see. I left a couple days off, and people ain't know what to do with themselves. People ain't know what to do with themselves. Good God Almighty! Dana J, give you some time to get your content up and 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 make you a few bucks on your channel, and y'all don't know what to do. That's sad. That's sad. Y'all do not know what to do. That's sad. Excuse me. That's sad. So I'm going to say this. At the bottom of the screen, there's a box. And a circle with a dollar sign in it. It's called the Super Chat, right? 
in that super chat box, you can donate anything from one dollar to four thousand dollars. Nothing too big, nothing too small. I truly appreciate the size that you choose to donate. You know, I get it. Also, if you want to donate to me and the channel, there's a thing that I have operating called a cash app. You go ahead and hit that cash app, and the cash app is scrolling at the bottom of the screen is dollar sign <clears throat> official Dana J. Y'all gotta excuse me. I'm I'm trying to battle this cold that's trying to sit in, but I refuse to let it happen. Also, um, y'all see the tip chart at the bottom, but I'm about to change that. Uh, you don't pay that tip job no, no attention. This is an old joint. I'm about to change it for the year 224. I'm about to change it all up. Um, some things I'm getting away from. Also, follow me on all platforms. Follow me on all platforms because you never know where I'm going to strike. And me striking somewhere, it might be somewhere that you don't know. Because you might be out the loop. I might be talking about something that you want me to talk about. Don't let me go and catch you out the loop. Meaning that you don't want to be missing content. Some people don't like all the content that I bring. But if I stay on one topic, that means I'm one dimensional. I will be talking about a variety of topics if you see my title. Like it says, I'm talking about a various of things. A lot of current events. A lot of current events. Then 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 I'm gonna talk about this pedophile thing. You know, I'm gonna talk about this pedo thing. I'm gonna jump into that. Some people like Dana, no, no, don't do it, man. You crazy. You got me messed up if you think I'm not gonna do it. Because I get it. I get it. I hear everybody crying. Oh, it's not fair. What they doing to Diddy is not fair. I stand by everything I say. That nigga deserve everything he getting. And I don't care who don't like it. That's why it's my commentary. I say what I want to say. I put it down the way I put it down. And it is what it is. And I ain't looking for nobody's opinion. I ain't looking for nobody's approval or denial. I'm putting content out there and I'm keeping it moving. But God damn, I got so much content for the day. I'm sitting up here looking like, whoo, there's no way I'm going to do all this today. So I'm going to have to put part one to this. So let's jump into it, man. Uh, uh, I was scrolling and surfing on YouTube and... Uh, I heard people talking about the guy Nesto. I think that's Shirley Strawberry's uh, uh, husband or something. I got a question. If they got you on multiple devices and they got your devices, now, now I'm now I'm talking about real stuff, not no made up stuff, not no close your eyes and listen to the audio, not no. Well, don't pay attention to the audio and just look at what the picture say. No, I'm talking about they got you on some real stuff. Dude, take a plea. Take a plea. And I've been asked to cover the Shirley Strawberry joint, and I keep saying, no, I don't want to do it because I don't want to. You know what I mean? I just don't want problems, bro. I don't, I don't want problems, so I don't want to cover it, even though that it's people covering it. But uh, the folks that's giving you real commentary is not from this sector. Um, There's nothing going on in the R. Kelly world right now other than, and I got to go here, other than, uh, what, 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 what's that boy name? What's the guy name? Ronnie Bo, he been caught up in a lie. So what gets me is you got people from the sector like Mumbles. 
Mumbles, a.k.a. Chitlet Teeth, a.k.a. Chargoyle. She will go and say, well, 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 I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like this. And then she try to create a two tier system for people. I heard what she said today. And I had to talk myself out of going the way that I wanted to go. So what she's saying is that she don't think it's fair that people give opinions on Ronnie Bo when, when they catch him in a lie. But then she turned around and tried to tell y'all all this bullshit about me. That's not true. Then she say, well, I don't think Ronnie Bo is for R. Kelly or against R. Kelly. So why was he on your channel? Why did you get dolled up like the female gremlin and put all that lipstick on? And all that tight shit, and you couldn't breathe trying to give an interview. And, and mm -hmm, I, I, I'm just trying to figure some stuff out. He came on your platform. You gave a shitty ass interview. And I'm keeping it real. Because you was doing too much lusting. Because you thought you could knock Prima Donna out the box. But Prima ain't one dude. So now that other people is exposing his lies, right? Now you're talking about, I don't think it's right. And because, and when he came on your channel, you're supposed to say that. No, when somebody come on your channel and interview, even if you know it's a lie, you let them talk. You ain't supposed to confront them right there. Because if you confront them right there, they will never spill what all they got to spill. That's, that's interviewing one-on-one skills. That also walks into journalism. But I see a lot of people on here don't have journalistic integrity. So then she was talking about, oh, oh, the guy don't got no accreditation in my. Listen, you have 42 people that come in your chat. Me, I'm just coming back off a of hiatus and I got 50. He have damn near 2,000 people in his chat at one time. You think he give a fuck what you think? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Now, I didn't want to interview Ronnie Bo, but now I do. Knowing what I know, now I do. And it's weird because... The stuff that he said, it just don't make sense. And then he 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 put something out there that makes him trample into mail fraud and witness tampering. So I said, I'll wait and see if he come on my channel and then we can talk. If not, then, then I'll just, you know, drop it. I, I'll just come one one day and title it Ronnie Bo and just drop it and then play the video and then show y'all what I'm talking about in the video. Then, then Shit Latif had the nerve to say, oh, that book him. He went down there and he seen how much this lady done grew from selling seasonings. <laughs> and he trying to take her and he going to cut the oxtail in half and, and you are lit. Listen, man. I don't got to do that. Unlike you, I patronize from the lady. I believe Hey, Georgia girl, I believe in seeing folks that's doing the right thing prosper. So if I can add to patronizing, I'm going to do it. But however, the whole story of me going there was none of your business. Unlike you, I don't got to go post up at Rick Ross house and say, hey, I'm at Rick Ross house and he not even in the city. Hmm. I went 
to see the lady because I'm on a bigger mission. Something that you don't know nothing about. So with that being said, sometimes it pays just to shut the hell up and mind your business. Mind the business that pay you. And then the first, oh no, he going to make this money and this and this and this and this. Aren't you the same one that was trying to sell Walmart gold stockings and talk about they leggings and didn't get not one cent? Come on, man. I ain't going to well. I'm still the same. I'm still the same. My season got y'all so hot that I'm selling out. And my thing is, I want bigger bottles. Because the bottles I have, I feel as though they're good. But I want bigger bottles. I want bigger bottles. I want to look at who's doing what and where I'm slacking at. That's what a good marketer does. And he look at the bigger bottle and he look at the bigger picture and say, you know what? I can get those bottles. I can do my labels. And I can slide something in for free to build clientele. (laughs) At the end of the day, my whole thing is this. I'm good. Remember that. That's my saying for 2024-25. I'm good. And when I launch my shoes, you know what they're going to have on the side? I'm good. See, you got to look past the dumbness and you got to look into the future. And you got to look at it as it was so that way it shall be. And you look at the people, and you look at the demographic that you got to hit. Already know the hood talks. The hood will get your stuff sold, but the hood ain't going to buy. The hood always want discounts from the brother man. But they go pay full price for Neiman Marcus, for Gucci, for Jaja Damore. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If I'm stepping on your toes, just say ouch. So I've got some commentary because I don't believe in stripping one person without stripping them all. Now, I did a series on Diddy. People have got mad at me. People have hit me in my inbox. Why are you messing with Diddy? Why are you doing this? And I asked the same question. Why didn't R. Kelly have this type of pushback? These are questions. What up, Audra? These are questions that, that I'm asking. Why didn't R. Kelly have this type of pushback? But for Diddy, oh, he's, oh, it's all type of resistance. Oh, Diddy didn't do it. Diddy this, Diddy this, Diddy this. Then you have the ones that sit back and say, well, I don't believe Diddy did it. But you got people coming out. Real life people. Giving you detail to detail what Diddy has done to them. Then I heard one of the craziest questions that was asked of me. They said, how can you stand up for R. Kelly, but don't stand for Diddy? I had to think about that. I said... You ask me something idiotic like that? (laughs) 
You can look at <laughs> I ain't gonna go deep into it, but I'm just gonna say this because I don't want nobody knocking on my door. What do you know? I don't know a goddamn thing. That's not my case. I ain't on trial, but I do not mess with that guy. Hey, who's that? Hey, Sharice. Hey, Georgia girl. I do not mess with that guy. And I said once and I say it again, I think it was crazy for Robert to come out and speak up for Diddy and Diddy didn't speak up for him. Actually, Diddy threw him under the bus. I think Robert should have just sat back and just mind his own business and pray that the case come up and Bon Jean can get him off. And then when he get free, he, he can talk about Diddy. But as long as he in that hellhole, he 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 shouldn't be talking about Diddy. I'm going to be honest. He should be saying, fuck Diddy and fuck everybody else. And I'm saying this because nobody came to his defense. How y'all doing, everybody that's coming in late? Nobody came to his defense. And I keep making that statement for a reason. And the reason I'm making that statement is this right here. And I'm just going to make you think. Who is this, man? Okay, Hammer Time, I'm praying for you. You was in a car accident. I'm praying for you. Oh, man. I'm praying for you. But Diddy is being alleged of all this hellacious stuff with photos and videos to accompany it. Rob, you was the poster guy for that. Because Aaron Hall wasn't enough. So you was the poster guy for that. So why would you come out and speak out for a guy that don't even deal with you? But like I say, Robert Sylvester Kelly has grown. He make his own decisions. I just know me. I wouldn't be doing it. I, I wouldn't even give a hell about a ditty. So let's get into this content. Because we're going to talk about Diddy, too, again. And now, now, somebody I know has spoke out and been speaking out against Diddy. And people just been not paying him attention. Now, let's start from the bottom. Or should I say, let's start from the top. Boom, and ring around to the middle and drop down to the bottom and come back up to the top. That's only part one. There's no way I can do all this in today. It's 7.36. There's no way. But I'm going to try. Let's go. Oh, let's go. First things first. John Kerry daughter. I keep telling y'all, for everything there's a distraction for, there's something major going on. But John Kerry daughter, Vanessa, has celebrated her promotion to the World Economic Forums. That's the WEF. And she's and she got a promotion to the World Economic Forums Board of Agenda Contributors by urging the elitist organization, y'all know what that organization is, to transform itself into a world government and seize total control of humanity regardless of whether we the people consent. According to Vanessa Carey, the time is ripe for the globalist coup, diet, dieted, which utilizes the control mechanisms in the World Health Organization's pandemic treaty to create a world government that answers to who? Nobody. Explaining that Humanity has been softened up by the COVID pandemic. Carrie outlined disturbing plans to ramp up an agenda of 
fear mongering propaganda about climate change to terrorize humanity and to giving up the last of our rapidly diminishing freedoms. And it says that John Kerry's daughter says billions of humans must die for the new world order. So, so with that being said, you got things like this going around and they don't want you to know what's being said. They don't want you to know what's actually going on and behind your back. Secondly, we got to talk about my guy, the best president in the world, in my opinion. In my opinion. But Trump has sued the judge. And right here, Donald, President Donald J. Trump's recusal motion. Okay. I'm not going to go through the motion, but that's everything that's on it. And hold on. I, I want you to think about it. I want you to look at this. A, lawyer and merchant. This goes deep. It says, President Trump respectfully submits this memorandum and accompanying affiliation, I, I, I mean, affirmation and support of this motion to, rec I mean, for recusal based on due process under the state and federal constitutions. Judiciary Law 14, as well as 22 NYCRR 100.2 and 100.3. Your Honor's daughter, lawyer merchant, has a direct financial interest in these proceedings by virtue of her ownership stake and leadership role at Authentic Campaigns, Inc., based on public district disbursements data, Authentic which services exclusive Democrat clients is the number 21 ranked vendor in the country in connection with the 2024 election. In 2019, Ms. Merchant made public statements during a podcast regarding a conversation with your honor that reflect bias against President Trump from both speakers in that exchange. Consistent with that conversation, President Biden and Vice President Harris are long-term clients of Authentic and Ms. Merchant, along with many other politicians and entities who are actively campaigning and advocating against President Trump right now. At least six of Authentic's clients use fundraising solicitations that reference this case around the time of the indictment, President Trump's arraignment, or following the court's denial of President Trump's recusal motion. Authentic's clients dispersed more than $18 million to the company between the return of the indictment and the present. It is industry, it is industry practice that authentic will receive percentages based on funds raised and and recipient engagement and ms and ms merchant has had an ownership stake and leadership role in the company while this case is pending in august 2023 the court ruled that president trump's recusal motion was based on remote and speculative arguments we dispute that conclusion and it is clear that this motion, who I'm just saying it, it. I told you this rabbit hole. As far as Trump, it gets hot, and what people don't understand is when folks like me stand up for Trump, it's not that we standing up for Trump himself, which we are, but we ain't. But we standing up for the Constitution because we see a lot of stuff that's going on is wrong, and we see what's going on. A lot of people don't want to, you know, get into that. They, oh, no, Trump is wrong. Trump is this. Trump is that. But they can't give you not one thing that Trump has done wrong. Oh, no, he ran this country wrong. OK, he's a businessman. And the country is a corporation, meaning it's a business. So who would you have run the country, a businessman or someone that's just trying to play around, a.k.a. Joe Biden? Make it make sense. What up, Angela? Make it make sense. 
then we're gonna keep going because we ain't stopping. Let's see what else we have on a on the ticket. Ah, the illegals. Thanks to Biden and the Democrats and some Republicans, some American cities are spending billions of your tax dollars on benefits for illegal migrants. Now, this is where I have a problem at. New York is spending $1.47 billion on temporary food and housing services for these migrants. $53 million in debit control and debit card program for these migrants. $1,400 a month in SNAP benefits for these migrants. But wait a minute, let me ask you this question. How many veterans do we have sleeping on the streets that they ain't fighting for? Make it make sense. If they gave the veterans this, we wouldn't have a homeless population. That part, that part, Angela, I stand on business. So if they doing this for migrants and won't do this for veterans, meaning their own, what do you think they're going to do for you? Other than make you pay for that. That's why I tell everybody, stop paying taxes. Judah, that is the part that people don't understand. They don't owe a shit. Reparations, take that shit and stick it somewhere. There's no such thing as reparations, bro. If you think I'm lying, go read House Joint Resolution 192. You can't give something that you don't have. There is no money in the United States. Everything you're spending is IOU, debt notes. That's all it is. Then Los Angeles is giving them, wait a minute, they're giving migrants full health coverage and insurance for over 700,000 illegals. And they're giving them $1,000 per month through L.A. County. Through LA County's guaranteed income. Stop. They've been giving incentives to Caucasian migrants. See, listen, I keep asking this question what about the veterans? And if they're giving these people that, why are they allowing the indignities folks to get on social service? Think about it. This is where you sit back and think. For the people that run with, with, with the EBT cards, and I'm not knocking it. Hell, and my mama had an EBT card. But ask yourself this question. They maximizing off of child support and now for government assistance period. Right, they minimizing off of migrants, and I ain't even get to Chicago yet. This is why I say I ain't gonna get past everything because I really got to slow walk this. I I can't walk through this without people understanding what's going on. What's going on? Can I see the headliners right here? Ex FBI CIA insider. There, there was 20 agents in Capitol Right. And see, people don't want to talk about the real stuff. First thing they want to talk about is Donald Trump is an insurrectionist. No, he's not. But then they turn around and say, we don't want to put a jacket on Diddy if it ain't true. But y'all throw a jacket that's damn sure not true on Trump. And you can't have it both ways. Again, I know my attendance count won't go down, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to tell the truth. Y'all come back and watch the replay game. Make it make sense. And see, and one thing I love about over here is even people that I talk to every day, 
don't agree with me. So I see my brother just come in the chat and say, how is he not? Go look at the speech. He said, let's march peacefully and patriotically. And from where Trump was at, it walking, it would take approximately 34 minutes to get from where he was at over to the front gate of the Capitol. At the time he was concluding his speech, they was being let in the Capitol. Some people was busting in windows. So how can he instruct Antifa? How can he instruct the CIA agents and the FBI agents to do something that they already had instructions to do? What up, Diamond? I'm just saying. Now, if Trump said, look, go down there and kick open every door, I say lock his ass up because he did it. But I can't put a jacket on somebody that he didn't. I can't do it. So Chicago got 300 million spent and temporary food and housing services, laundry, mental health screenings, and 15,000 rental support to selected illegals. Now, let me ask this question. With this being said, how many veterans getting this? Ah, I like what you just said, Tomorrow Leader Sports Network. Well, let's go here. I disagree with you because Trump had every right to say what he said. He gave a speech. He was the president. And let's keep it real. And without all the fraud and all the lies, he's still the president. Now, I know you, you two going to be like, oh, no. And we got to take his channel. Take it. I tell everybody, go and join me over on Locals. I go over Locals and I turn that mother out just like I did YouTube. My thing is stop the corruption all the way around the board. So as we exit that corruption momentarily, we're going to enter another corruption spot. Jonathan Majors avoids jail time in domestic violence case, judge rules, which I believe it was totally stacked against him. Jonathan Majors, whose promising acting career stalled after a domestic violence conviction in New York, was sentenced Monday to domestic violence programming after the judge decided jail is not necessary. Then, then I got a question. Then I got a question. And you got a melanated man running down the street for his life, running away from a Caucasian woman. And when they catch up to both of them, they take him to court and he's been found guilty. I'm lost. He's running away. She's running to catch him, to hit him. And he's found guilty. Majors must complete a 52-week in-person batters intervention program in Los Angeles. What? Continue mental health counseling and stay away from the victim, his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari said Manhattan criminal court judge Michael Gaffrey. Majors faced a, ma a maximum of 364 days in jail a year. But the Manhattan District Attorney's Office did not seek jail time instead. Instead, Prosecutor Kelly Galloway said domestic violence programming along with an order of protection against Jabari would suffice. You know what? Watch this. What prosecutor you know would settle for that? If their job wasn't to indict him, 
and charge him so he will lose everything he had coming. Paramount done with him. He will get no more action-packed roles. Done with him. Their job was to make sure he lost his job. Their job was to make sure that he lost his job. This defendant is no longer cloaked with the presumption of innocence, Galloway said. Despite the jury's verdict, the defendant has still refused to accept any responsibility for his actions. Jabari said in a victim impact statement that majors remains a danger to others. Jabari spoke of extreme physical and emotional pain. She said she sustained both immediately and over the months that followed their March 2023 altercation. When I was with him, I became a different version of myself. I was small, scared, and vulnerable, Jabari said from the podium. He is not sorry. He has not accepted responsibility, and he will do it again. He will abuse other women. Majors embraced his current girlfriend, actress Megan Good, before taking his seat at the defense table ahead of sentencing. Majors read from the Bible before the judge took the bench. Defense attorney Priya Chaudhry said Majors declined to speak at sentencing due to Jabari's civil lawsuit against him. Watch this. I just said they made sure that he can't work again in Hollywood, right? Now watch this. If you took him to court for all this abuse and everything, ask yourself this question. Why is there a civil lawsuit? Why is there a civil lawsuit after a criminal lawsuit? And why couldn't it be a civil lawsuit first before a criminal lawsuit? Make it make sense. Then it says, this has been the most challenging year of Mr. Major's life, Chaudhry said. He promises to complete whatever program the court orders with an open heart. She added, we are optimistic Mr. Majors will work in the film industry again soon. We are what? Optimistic. I don't got to look that up. Y'all know what that means. Majors 34 was convicted of one count of misdemeanor, third degree assault, and one count of second degree harassment, but acquitted of two other counts of assault and aggravated harassment and a split verdict following a trial in December, 2023. The mixed verdict signaled the jury believed Majors recklessly assaulted his girlfriend, but did not intentionally do so. That don't make sense. That don't make sense at all. The charges stem from a March, 2023 altercation with his then girlfriend, in a four higher SUV in Manhattan. Jabari testified during the trial that she tried to grab his phone after seeing a message pop up saying, I wish I was kissing you. She described in court Majors pulling her right hand behind her back while holding the phone in her left. Hold on. That's his phone. So you violated him. Jonathan Major's motion to set aside conviction denied ahead of sentencing. It just felt like he was twisting my arm and my hand and trying to make me feel pain, she said in court. Prosecutor said Jabari fractured her finger and showed jurors photos taken by police of her injuries, including a cut to her head, a cut to her a cut to her ear, and the bruise and swollen finger. Majors declined to testify in his defense during the trial. In a sit-down interview with ABC News Live, Lindsey Davis in January, his first after his conviction, he denied twisting her arm and causing those injuries. 
She went to grab the phone. I held the phone. I pulled the phone back. She came on top of me, squeezed my face, slapped me. That's all I remember, he said. Last week, Gaffrey declined to throw out the conviction as Majors requested. The jury reasonably could have concluded that defendant recklessly caused physical injury to Ms. Jabari, Gaffrey vote. Jabari sued the actor for defamation and other alleged injuries last month, according to the civil complaint. She is seeking damages for physical injuries. She says she suffered as a result of the incident. She also claimed Majors committed intentional infliction of emotional distress against her and made knowingly false statements about her during the interview with Davis, according to the civil complaint. Chaudhry said in a statement to ABC News following the filing that Majors is preparing counterclaims against Jabari. Like I said, that's all they wanted to do was break him. They don't care nothing about that. They wanted to make sure that his rise didn't rise so quick. Um, Let me see what y'all saying. Tomorrow Lee Sports Network said he didn't apologize so her getting that money for the civil suit is out the window because he didn't show he was complicit for any actions she claims he did. Facts. 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 Let's keep moving on. We about to move on. The shot report. Here we go. Illegal migrants arrested for smuggling minors over the border and creating child porn. The man used a fake birth certificate for the children and was allowed to enter the country with nothing more than a court date. Why are they dispersed throughout the country and not sent back? Hold on. Then a migrant tracker, arrest of Chinese nationals in 2024 who crossed the border illegally skyrocketed now poised to surpass all of 2023 numbers within weeks. Here's the numbers right there. Arrest of Chinese nationals who crossed the U.S. border illegally. There's the numbers. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. All right. Now, for some people, they're going to say, Dana, you crazy. Um, Netflix is a good place to go. I tell everybody, Netflix is the devil's playground. And I won't pay for my daughter's Netflix account. I won't even pay for a Netflix account for me. Here's why. Here's why. Check it out. Known as the father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud claimed his father molested all of his siblings. Freud was a cocaine addict, as well as a pedophile advocate who taught that children sexually lusted after their parents and that children who reported sexual abuse by adults had either imagined or fantasized the experience. He believed that women were the problem with society and all their problems stemmed from not having a penis. Freud's grandson, Sir Clement Freud, has been accused of molesting multiple young girls and was suspected in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Sigmund Freud's sister, Anna Freud, whom Freud claimed was regularly molested and abused by their perverted father, gave birth to Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays, the father of propaganda. Bernays took his family's work in psychology and used it to help governments and corporations manipulate the minds of the public. 
hired by the American Tobacco Company, Bernays manipulated women into buying more cigarettes by convincing them that smoking was a form of feminist liberation. During this propaganda campaign, he dubbed cigarettes torches of freedom. Thanks to Bernays and his family's twisted legacy, social engineering became big business. Modern psychology was used to exploit mankind's mental weaknesses, nurture the public's lower desires, and turn people into mindless consumers. Is it any surprise then that the great nephew of Edward Bernays is none other than Mark Bernays Randolph, the co-founder and original CEO of Netflix? Does anyone really think this is a coincidence? Netflix has not only replaced network television as the premier home of pop culture, it is also continuing the degenerate, depraved social engineering of the Bernays Freud legacy. In 13 Reasons Why, Netflix was accused of romanticizing suicide during a recent increase of teenage suicides. In The Devil Next Door, they were accused of rewriting history to deceive viewers into believing that Poland was responsible for establishing Nazi death camps. In The First Temptation of Christ, Jesus Christ is depicted as a homosexual. And a Texas grand jury indicted Netflix for depicting child sex in the movie Cuties. Netflix and Chill, the new preferred method for brainwashing the masses. Brought to you by one of the most depraved, degenerate families of the modern era. Turn it off and wake up. Hey, Mama Mary. I'm just trying to let people know. I'm just trying to give y'all what, what it is. Because one thing about me, I'm not just going to go after Diddy. I'm going after all of them. Let's go. Uh, money can't buy you peace. Disney star China Anna McLean speaks on the evil in Hollywood. Full video below. Uh, don't want to watch the video. Uh, no, I will read it. And this thought-provoking video, Disney star China Anna McLean fearlessly addresses a topic that often remains shrouded in secrecy. The presence of evil in Hollywood. As a well-respected young actress and performer, McLean sheds light on the often overlooked dark side of the entertainment industry. Throughout her career, McLean has witnessed firsthand the horror realities that lurk beneath the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. In this candid interview, she fearlessly exposes the truth, unmasking the hidden forces that, per that perpetuate the underbelly of the industry. With powerful insight and undeniable authenticity, McLean shares her personal experiences excuse me, and revelations giving answers, I mean, giving viewers a glimpse into the web of manipulation and corruption that exists within a place typically associated with dreams and success. She, del she, she delves deep into the often taboo topics of exploitation, coercion, and secrecy, urging everyone to reconsider their views on the, seem on the seemingly flawless facade of Hollywood. As she unhurt, unearths the truth, McLean encourages open conversations and critical thinking about the impacts of the entertainment industry on the lives of young, hopefully hopeful individuals aspiring to make it big. By bravely speaking out, she hopes to inspire change and promote a safer and more transparent Hollywood for future generations. Join China and McAfee, I mean, and McLean, as she uncovers the disturbing realities that hunt Hollywood's corridors, exposing the evils that demand our attention and challenge us to rethink our unquestioning admiration of the industry. Together, let's Let's demystify the dark side and work towards creating a more enlightened and responsible entertainment culture. Watch the video below. 
Hold on. Let's see. What's up, y'all? Gerald here, creator of Gospel Chops and your host for this YouTube channel, back with another video. You know, it's always a pleasure when I find other voices in the entertainment industry that are singing the same. Okay, so I know that there are a lot of people that are wondering why it seems like believers in God are always trying to like tell other people about it. It's like, why not just keep it to yourself, right? I've gotten that a lot since I started doing these videos. It's like, China, we get it. You believe in God. If you believe, just believe. And then like, you don't have to make others believe too. But I think there's a little bit of confusion and I am going to hopefully clear it up for you today as to why I do it and why I make these videos. This analogy that I'm gonna use today is one that my dad told myself and my family a long time ago and it always stuck with me. Okay, so we're gonna call it Michael McLean's snake in the yard analogy, okay? So say we're best friends. You come over to my house and we chilling, right? We watching movies, we listening to music, and I got like art stuff spread out, so we drawing and painting and stuff. And then I remember, oh shoot, I forgot to take my dog out. Just stay here, let me take him in the backyard, I'll be right back. You're like, okay, cool. I leave you in the room painting. I take my dog downstairs and I unlock the door. I'm like, come on, Cujo. And right when I'm walking out, what do I see? <gasps> I see a snake in the yard. So I grab my dog, rush back inside, close, lock the door. And then I go back upstairs to my room where I left you. I see that you've gotten up and you're about to leave the room. And I'm like, wait, where are you going? And you're like, Oh, I just, I wanted to go to the backyard too, get some fresh air from these paint fumes. And I said, okay. I'll see you when you get back. So you go downstairs, you open the door, you head out there to get some fresh air and oh, a snake bites you. So you throw it off of you and you run back in the house and you close the door and you lock it, you run back upstairs to my room and you starting to limp at this point. Your leg is hurting. And you're like, China, China, I just got bit. There's a snake in the yard. And I say, oh yeah, I know. I saw it when I was going to take my dog out. What would your next statement be? China, why didn't you tell me? You saw me heading in that direction. I told you I was going in the backyard. Why didn't you tell me there was a snake back there? And I said, I don't know. I, I wasn't trying to force what I knew on you. So I just thought that you should learn for yourself as we all should, you know, cause I love you. So I was trying to give you that freedom. Does that make any sense? You wouldn't think that I actually loved you. If I knew there was a snake in the yard, you told me, oh, I'm about to go to the backyard. And I just let you wander on back there without warning you of the danger. Now, if you told me, oh, I'm going to the backyard to get some air. And I said, oh, no, 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 don't go back there. I just saw a snake back there. Would giving you that information be forcing something down your throat? Forcing my beliefs on you? No, it's showing you that I love you and I care about what happens to you. I do videos talking about God to warn you about the snake in the yard. That's the point. I was headed in the backyard. By the grace of God, I got away from the snake before it bit me. Now I see others heading towards the backyard. I know there's a snake back there. And so I'm just warning you and letting you know, yo, there is danger in that direction. And now you have a choice to make. It's as simple as that. You can either choose to be like, oh, heard you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back <laughs> the way I came. Or you're gonna choose to be like, China, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I I'm gonna go back there anyway, excuse me. Now notice, nowhere in my analogy, or Michael McLean's analogy, did I say that I was going to force you in the room and I was going to forcefully keep you from going in the backyard. That would be forcing something down your throat. I never said that. You're your own person. You got free will. If you want to go in the backyard after I've told you that there's a snake back there, do your thing. You can go. You got to make your own decisions. But just warning you of the dangers, see, because I've been through certain things in my life, especially in the industry that I work in. So I know that God is real and people can tell you all day, well, you don't know that. You don't know God is real. That's a belief. You don't know what I know. Only I do. 
if I ask you what your favorite color is and you say, oh, it's blue. And I'm like, you don't know that. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, because only you know your experiences in life. Only you know what you know, just like me. So I don't believe that God is real. I know God is real at this point, whether people believe that or not, that's the truth. Either way, I'm not gonna force you to do nothing. Whatever decisions you make in your life ain't none of my business, they got nothing to do with me. But if I didn't tell you about the danger, I would not be showing you love or compassion. I would be showing you that I didn't give a crap about you. And it's funny because this situation literally just happened. Our neighbor texted myself and my sisters and was like, uh, I just saw a snake in my yard. So just wanted to let y'all know for your own safety and for your pet safety. Our neighbor did that because they have love in their heart. This is how I show you that I love you. I have gotten bullied more for talking about God than I ever have in my life. Public school wasn't this bad. Like for real, I did not expect to have people straight up cussing me smooth out for doing these videos about God. And I've tried to do it respectfully. I don't know why I was shocked about that though. It literally says in the Bible, it talks about how spreading the word of God is difficult. It's not easy. Jesus is my example. He is the one that I want to be like. I am not required to convert anybody in order to secure my eternity. I have accepted that Jesus paid the wages of my sin on that cross when he was crucified. I love God and I love his son, Jesus Christ. And I try my best to live my life according to his word. I try my best. I already know where I'm going when I die, but what good is eternity in paradise if I have left a whole host of other people when I could have shared these things with you guys? Thanks you could have maybe made it too. Facts. What good is that? What really did I change? The uh, afterlife is the most important part. We don't know how long we're gonna get down here on this earth. I could die tomorrow. If I warn you of the danger that I know is waiting down there and you still choose to go in that direction, I'm not mad at you. I don't hate you. It don't even affect me. But if you end up in trouble, just know that I tried because I love you. So you can't be mad at me. You can't blame me. And guess who else you can't blame? God. Because I've heard so many people say, oh, I, I, no, I don't believe in God because he ain't never tried to show me no sort of sign. He's never tried to reveal himself to me or let me know that he cares or in any sort of way. I, I, I don't know. I ain't got nothing to work with here. Really? How'd you come in contact with this video? Did it pop up on your For You page or your home page randomly? Did a friend or a family member just happen to send it to you out of the blue? I'm sorry for all the noise in the background. I don't know what is happening over there. Somebody mowing a lawn. It sounds like somebody shooting off firecrackers in that direction. I don't know what's going on, but just excuse the noise. If you don't want to watch my videos talking about God, I love you just the same. But for the people that do want to hear it, these videos are going to be here. Because in this dark world we're in, I've noticed a pattern in what is being represented. People think that this stuff is just a game. There is a reason why you see people dressed up as Satan, not just, you know, like Satan slipping himself in a little bit. No, full on visuals of Satan, people dressed as Satan, you know, dressed as a demon got upside down crosses all on their clothes or pentagrams on their clothes. And people are just like, oh, that's funny. It's, you know, we're making fun. No, there's a, there's a reason why the entertainment industry is doing that, y'all. They know good and doggone well that God exists. They also know that Satan exists. They're just counting on the fact that y'all don't know that. But either way, the things that you take in, that they're feeding you, those things affect you. Whether you realize it in the moment or not, they affect you. That's why they do it entertainment industry it's about influence i'm not going to sacrifice the honesty in order to be politically correct and there you have it folks real world experience from an wow so if that's not enough then i don't know what it is however we're gonna keep going my guy freddie p speaks out about diddy yet again and nobody paying them attention. Check this out. See, fall. And it be niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's this nigga Puffy. 
and my main motherfucking reason why I really hate fucking life, dog. Like, people don't even understand. It take a lot to do this video. I don't even know if I'm gonna release it, but I need to do some my sanity. I had to just break away and talk to myself real quick. <laughs> but people don't know what a nigga been through to be at, at your highest peak and have it snatched away from you because you don't want to kiss that. And man, we all black people, man. Black people continue to step on each other and hold each other down. And that shit, that shit for people mental. I'm the nigga that'll run in there and blow your shit loose, bro. I don't give a fuck. You, do you really want to be in a situation where you make a man that mad, dog? Well, you take it from a man's family where I got to sell dope for 20 years and survive in these streets and still don't have a felony, my nigga. I have my, my freedom almost taken away from me several times, dog. You hear me? I'm trying to survive, my nigga. You can't go get no job. You just want to be regular sometimes. You can't even go get a job. You walk in the job. Hey, it's Freddy P. Uh, what's up, boy? You got to back up by the What the fuck? You can't even be a regular human no more after some shit like that. But he don't know nothing about that because he don't come from this shit. He don't come from this shit for real. Niggas like that don't come from this shit. Niggas like that don't think about all about hurting. And get Gain, 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 power, 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 power. Niggas gonna die horribly, man. You niggas gonna die horribly. Test cancer something, man. God gonna get you niggas, man. Cause you fuck with God hard, man. You got a nigga like me, don't even care about no money. I would have did way more for my city than even any one of these niggas did. Cause I'm from Liberty City, I'm from Old Town. Them niggas just shoot videos, though. Them niggas ain't never did shit for Gibson Paul, William Paul. Them niggas ain't never built no homes for the homeless. Them niggas ain't did nothing I would have did. Them niggas exploited my city, they exploited the culture. Y'all don't know what I'm just telling y'all, man. Be mindful, dog. Appreciate what you what you got, man. But I ain't get it. You're not God, bro. When God put you on. Were you recently injured in a car accident? Look at this check for $160,000. On a mission to change people's lives, you do what he asks you to do. And you'll be rewarded. Nigga, at 900 million, nigga, you still at nine. Kanye done passed you. Jay done passed you. Cause they don't practice bad business like that. They ain't stepping on each other to get where they gotta go. Look at you look at Jay-Z, nigga, Jay Z, nigga, Jay Dane made millions, Bean made millions. All them niggas around them made real money. Nigga, you ain't made a hundred, two hundred thousand with you, nigga. But you done made over 60, 70 million off, 70 million off us, nigga. And we ain't make two hundred thousand a piece off you, nigga. Ah. Listen, man. Hold on. I just want to tell y'all, millions, Bing made millions. All them niggas around them made real money, nigga. You ain't made a hundred, two hundred thousand with you, nigga. But you done made over 60, 70 million off, seventy million off us, nigga. And we ain't make two hundred thousand a piece off you, nigga. Listen, man. I just want to tell y'all, this music industry ain't what it seems. I got people in this music industry right now that won't fuck with me. And I was cool with them. They won't fuck with me because of that nigga. Because fuck with me, me and you won't fuck with that nigga. He take it personal. He want to shut doors. So they don't want to have nothing to do with that. And I don't blame him. I blame that nigga. When you go through what that nigga put, put a nigga through for the last 20 years, you get tired, bro. You just tired. You, 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 you come, you grow hate. It's like a cancer. It's like, nigga, what, 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 what type of nigga is you? I want to leave this here in case I ever fucking perish, my nigga. You could look back at this, dog. You die before me, dog. How you think I'm gonna feel? You think I'm gonna, you think I'm gonna laugh? Or you think I'm gonna cry? When you die, people pull the crowd about you, dawg. This world gonna talk bad about you, bro. This world gonna exploit every bad thing, how you got every bad dollar. Your legacy is fucked, man. And you don't even go back and try to make it right, my nigga. Cause that shit not in you. 
Y'all niggas be worried about what's on you, not what's in you. That's the difference between everybody and y'all generation and my generation. That's the, the fuck generation, period. You niggas that's built for money only worry about what's on you. Why does it seem like his name out of all is villainized? It's being one of them dudes that just take, 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 take terrible business. Why does it seem like Diddy's name is the one? It's facts. All? The facts. You got to look at it. Even Kanye made motherfucking Big Sean a millionaire. Yeah. Even Kanye made John Legend a millionaire. Jay-Z lowest accomplishment is worth $65 million. And that's J. Cole. He's a god. Talk about it. Yeah. You got Rihanna, who's a billionaire. Kanye, who's a billionaire. Like, Thanks. why you don't have one millionaire under your belt? Not one. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's the facts, bro. You don't deal with 40, 50 artists, man. And, and you and you the only one that made money. You the only one. You the only one that's still surviving. Jay-Z got a list of people up on there. Even fucking Beanie Siegel made money. Dane made money big. And the whole camp made money. Petey Crack, all them boys made money. Mm -hmm. Diddy the only one, bro, because he don't have no talent. His talent is robbing people. His talent is picking out the best So I can tell you now, he, he from Mount Vernon. So he can hear some shit that say, damn, you went through that? Boy, put that shit on track. Sell it to the people because of his face. And you know, he the gatekeeper. You get what I'm saying? So he ate off that. He ate off having resources. He ate off being the one that can walk you through the dope. You don't have no talent though. Why are you richer than the talent? Because you robbed the talent. Why your son got made some motherfucking uh, publishing? What? This shit don't make no fucking sense. Why your mama got all published? Mm. This shit don't make no sense. Why my son ain't got it? Whoa! Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just evident. Like, he's the only one that practiced bad business. And that's why that nigga on, can't touch a bill. Not the best store I could tell you now. He, he from Mount Vernon. So, he can hear some shit that say, dang. You went through that? Boy, put that shit on track. Sell it to the people because of his face. And you know, he the gatekeeper. You get what I'm saying? Right. So he ate off that. He ate off having resources. He ate off being the one that can walk you through the dope. You don't have no talent though. Why are you richer than the talent? Because you robbed the talent. Why your son got made some motherfucking uh, publishing? That shit Ooh. don't make no fucking sense. Why your mama got all published? Mm. This shit don't make no sense. Why my son ain't got it? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just evident. Like, he's the only one that practiced bad business. And that's why that nigga can't touch a bill. Because he he can't touch a billion. Because it's going to be hard to get the next hundred million. The world don't need you no more. You know what I'm saying? What I mean is, people used to need him to be seen with him. Now he's the parasite. He just cleans a pair. He's a hip hop parasite. So, yo, yo, yo. I want me. A piece of cheesecake. <laughs> From you know where to get the cheesecake spot is at. Yeah, yeah. And y'all can walk from here, get the cheesecake, see the city, enjoy the sights, would you? Fred, you all right? Fred, yeah, yeah. you all right? Fred, I'm good. This dude must be crazy. Sooner or later, we gonna crash. Every month, this Airbnb pays me in semi possible. What cheesecake? If my cheesecake is in the least bit soft, a brittle, or not on point, your will go back. You know what Junior's is at? Yo, fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. We just want this, man, but we was just on the tip, like you was trying to put us out there like a bitch or something, like make us walk all the way to Brooklyn, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't really care how you I, took it. Whatever you went through your mind, it was a mission that had to be done. All this psychological, that's ego. So the ego's in your way. So the ego made the decision. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing some, I'm gonna get some cheesecake. If you got that much ego, go do your thing, man. Don't sit here and be talking about it, man. Be fly about it. Get your swag on, walk that way. If that way, do it. If you wanna think about it, or if you ain't gonna walk that way, walk to Brooklyn and be happy. He jumped online and said, quote, Stop all your crying, being, and moaning. Hustle harder or get the F out of our way. No ego, just hustle. Love. End quote. Well, after P. Diddy said that, Freddie P. jumped back online and he responded to Diddy by saying the following. I don't want to be down with you niggas. I done seen what it was. 
All I said was go back and make it right. You can't do nothing for me, bro. I don't want nothing from that man, bro. That man can say, give me, I'll give you $2 million on my mama's soul. Everybody know me. That man can say, I'll give you $2 million right now to come sit with me. I don't want to, bro. You had 20 years, bro. All I ask is that you go make it right with my, with my group members, with Danny Lee Kane, with Day 26. Go, go help those people, bro. So I don't want nobody to get my message, mister. I see the little subliminal. Bro, don't do that, bro. Because, like, we, get, we just got to go through the history. Let's go. Loon, G Del, uh, Black Rob, uh, uh, Danny the Kane, five of those or four of those. I don't even got no disrespect to them because I never really watched the show. But I know RB and uh, Don and uh, I don't know them, but you know, I know of them because you know, clips and shit. So, ain't no disrespect, bro. Day 26. Why nobody ever signed again, bro? Nobody. I'm just saying, if, 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 if it's just me tripping and Oh, you just mad. If I'm just mad, bro, let's go to the facts. Let's look at the history. There's nobody ever been a millionaire. Nobody never got a second deal out of this man. And these people got talent, bro. Okay? I said what I said, bro. This ain't no beef. I don't got no beef. I got beef with the nigga. I'm hunting, man. I ain't got no beef with y'all, man. They mad with that truth, dog. One thing about the truth, dog. That shit hurt, bro. That shit hurt. Niggas like hustle hard and dark crime, bitch and moan. When, I, when them tears drop, Every time a tear dropped on that video was for me doing something to somebody, bro. I'm a sucker for everything I ever did to him. Every time I was stood over a nigga, every time I ran a nigga down, I'm a sucker for that, bro. Because I live for God, bro. And he, I had the only man thing I blamed you about was I had an opportunity not to go that route. You could have helped me not go that route. So when I wake up in sweats and tears and I wake up in my pain, bro, I feel like it's your fault because you could have saved me from that route. That's it. It ain't got you on OV nothing. I get offended, yeah. I think I see your kid spending money on shit. Yeah, I get offended, my nigga, cause my kid ain't got that. You made a hundred million off. That's heavy stuff right there, man. Look, look, look. These look. These that brother said, these dudes is worried about what's on them and not what's in them. I said, man, that now that's a statement for the ages, man. The culture needs to hear that one. Okay? Uh, look, look, a lot of people in the culture need to hear that. Don't be focused on what's on you. Be focused about what's in you. You follow what I'm saying, man? You like this? That's a terrible statement when you consider uh, the the diddler. Well, that's a very relevant statement if you consider the diddler. Please, please be focused about. Please be worried about what could potentially be in you. You see what I'm saying? I'm look. I'm shocked. At, look, we, after after we've heard about ten years of these kinds of allegations and stuff like that, anybody after the year, like you know what I'm saying? Like anybody 2020 on up linking up with bruh knowing how he get down knowing what you've been hearing for the past two decades you got to be down with that with the you know what I'm saying with the shenanigans man i mean like everyone knows how the diddler gets down so why would you possibly want to link up at this point you know what i'm saying i don't know maybe it's me okay um so let me let me let me go to my shout outs real quick do i have any shout outs on deck i think i do uh so, you know, that's just one little joint. Uh, but I see tomorrow sports, tomorrow leaders sports network talk about the band ain't worth one million pennies. Yeah, but, it's, but that catalog still junk. And these are questions that I have. Like, why would that catalog be in your mama's name? Either way, you still eat. I just don't get it. But while we dealing with Diddy, let's pause Diddy. We already know he going through a lot. Let's talk about this motherfucker. Nickelodeon's Dan Schneider in trouble for sexual allegations. Hollywood has been known for its massive scandals years ago. Actor Corey Feldman and his acting partner Corey Haim Ham shocked the world when they revealed that they had been <coughs> abused by some of Hollywood's top executives and agents. I was surrounded by pedophiles, literally surrounded. They were everywhere. Feldman dubbed this the pedophile ring. It isn't surprising considering other allegations later came to light. Different Strokes actor Todd Bridges suffered from sexual abuse after con constantly being left with adults during the time he was filming. He
he would later go on to attribute the abuse as as the cause for his developed drug addiction. Whoa. He has no shame in letting others know about sex about sexual abuse. He is included. And how kids can be blind to perverts in the industry. These scandals have opened the doors for yet another twisted scandal, seeing that he's one of the biggest producers of children's entertainment. Dan Snyder, a former actor and producer at Nickelodeon, has been the subject of rumors for years about his relationship with underage teens. He is the reason for the success of many household names over the last 20 years. He produced and written shows for actresses such as Jamie Lynn Spears, Zoe 101, Ariana Grande, Victoria, Sam E. Cat, Amanda Bonds, All That, The Amanda Show, Victoria Justice, and more. Some of the rumors have included his foot fetishes. What? And how he would act, act them out on extras in his office. What the hell? Some have said that it is very noticeable if they were to watch his shows. Others have alleged that Snyder would reward those who listen with spinoff shows. While others would get backlisted, blacklisted if they didn't listen. Over the years, Nickelodeon gave the producer continuous slaps on the wrist and simply paid for attorneys to cover up his behavior. However, this time, the network has decided to cut ties with him and have agreed not to extend their deal with his company, Snyder's Bakery. Hold on. Nickelodeon still need to be blackballed. Snyder's Bakery need to be blackballed. The network and Schneider have agreed that it is now time for them to pursue other opportunities and projects. We thank Dan and his Snyder's Bakery producers, executive and social media team for their immeasurable contributions to Nickelodeon. And we wish them the best in their future endeavors. And Dan and Snyder's Bakery are proud of the work they did together with Nickelodeon and will always remain big fans of the network. Although Henry Danger will continue for a fifth season, Snyder series Game Shakers has been canceled. He is, he is the latest showrunner to part ways with Nickelodeon after sexual abuse allegations. Um, pervert. I think he need to be locked up. I think he need to be castrated. I think he need to be thrown away. And I think everybody need to blackball Nickelodeon and Snyder's Bakery. First of all, why would you name a film company Snyder's Bakery? And the more I get on him, the more I'm going to do. I'm not going to let up off of him. I'm not going to let up off of him. That's the one I want to keep going. Just like I'm not going to let up off this one. Since we're talking about pedophiles, right? What if I told you that the, uh, the so-called president is a pedophile? Now, I know what people are going to say. Oh, no, Donald Trump is one. Mm -mm. There's nothing alleging that Donald Trump is a pedophile. I had somebody tell me, oh, uh, uh, look at this paperwork. That paperwork has been redacted and has been taken away since then. And he was found not guilty. Yes, Willie and Disney too. But when I talk about pedophile, I'm talking about real life shit. Like, take a look at this, man. This man is pinching the nipples of Maria 
Piaces. Look at this. Look at this. This is just too much. Look at this. You see how she felt uncomfortable, right? So, you know, people going to say, no, it didn't happen. Well, here it is. This is Maria Pisces, right? Let's start from back here. Hold on. Let's start from right here. Um, I would do something about it, to be honest, if I thought it would help. But I honestly just think at this point, it would just make people angry. And I have already had people calling me out saying I'm lying. This is BS, even though it's not. But I just don't think it would help with anything right now. I understand your apprehension. The worst thing, though, is letting him get away with it because then he can do that to others. I just want you to know that there are millions of people who are on your side and they believe you. There is video evidence of what happened and I believe you. We all believe you. The next one says, why did you delete the comment? And Maria said, I have friends that would no longer be friends with me if they knew that. So I guess Jonathan Pacetti said, those friends aren't true friends then. You are abused by a pervert and you deserve justice, but only you can exact that justice by telling others. Somebody jumped in right here and put laughing my ass off. So then Jonathan put this up here, me too, hashtag me too. You should speak out about this and tell the world how the president, Joe Biden, pinched your nipple. And then he said, did Joe Biden pinch you? She said, yes. And then replied to Marcy, why, why don't you speak up about it? And she told you why right here. This is weird. Like if Trump was to do something like that, they would try to hammer Trump. They would try to hammer Trump. And right here, if she said anything, she had to move to Russia and seek political asylum because the DOJ would be seeking to indict her on charges of gun running or human trafficking or fraud. Yep. That's how they get down. So then we go to then we go to the diary. The diary that nobody want to talk about. This is Amy Harris. She found Ashley Biden's diary in a Florida beach home and felt morally obligated to make it public. Now Biden's DOJ is seeking prison time as punishment and pretending she stole it. In the diary, Ashley details how her father, Joe Biden, forced her to take inappropriate showers with him when she was a teenager that caused her to feel turned on when she wasn't supposed to be, adding that it made her feel uncomfortable. Now watch this. Everything I say from this point on is going to be triggering. So if this triggered you, I totally apologize. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm only trying to spread awareness. Ashley Biden denied the existence of the diary until she was caught on tape admitting it was hers. She even threatened to get Secret Service involved. Once, Biden, once again, the Biden DOJ is abusing the legal system like a dictatorship to punish people. It's time over a diary. I mean, this time over a diary they claim was fake, total BS. Here's the diary right here. Here's Joe Biden, and here's, here's the young lady, right? Here's Ashley Biden, okay? Joe Biden was caught on tape with a little girl. Here it is right here. Look, okay, here it is. The DOJ taking, taking the wrong side again. Instead of prosecuting Joe Biden for molesting his own daughter, the DOJ is prosecuting the person who found the diary which in which Ashley Biden herself 
documented the sexual abuse by her own father. Nothing to see here. And here it is right, 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 right here. DOJ demands prison time for Ashley Biden diary thief. It says the Justice Department on Tuesday asked the New York District Judge to sentence the woman who stole first daughter Ashley Biden's diary to four to 10 months in prison for, for the crime. And she ain't steal it. She found it. What the hell? Hold on. It's truly dark, even by modern standards. Biden should explain immediately why he inappropriately showered with his own daughter. He should be asked that at his next press availability. His chief of staff, Ron Klain, who runs the country, should be asked, you work for a man who showered with his own daughter and by her own account distorted the rest of her life because he did. How do you feel about that? And at that point, Joe Biden should resign. And at the very least, spend the rest of his life trying to repair his own children who need it badly. And the second point to make is that Biden is using the FBI as his personal secret police. Dispatching them forward to crush and intimidate and prosecute people who get in his way or his family's way. Maybe that's not surprising from a guy who spent his entire life living off taxpayers. He believes he owns the Department of Justice, but he doesn't. And the fact he's behaving as if he does is scary as hell. We cannot let the FBI become enforcers for politicians and their families. If we allow that, it's the end of everything. Harmeet Dillon is managing partner of the Dillon Law Group. She represents Project Veritas in this case. She joins us tonight. Harmeet, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. So we spoke about this when it initially happened, but it's ever more clear that Project Veritas and, and the woman who sold the diary committed no crime, certainly no federal crime, and that Joe Biden is using the FBI as his personal secret police, and no one is saying anything about it. Absolutely right, Tucker. And when you look at the search warrants that were served on our clients and executed, each of the four claims involves the word stolen, possession of stolen property, uh, conspiracy to transport stolen property across state lines, and so on. All stolen, 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 stolen. But guess what? All along, as we said, and now as the press is reporting independently, nothing was stolen in this case. And so that begs the question, how did the FBI get search warrants? How did multiple judges, by the way, sign off on search warrants, not just for the property that they seized, but for months beforehand, emails, 200,000 of them? And the answer is, somebody must have lied to a gullible or willing FBI who then passed on those lies to federal judges. Uh, who are those people? almost certainly members of the Biden family and their legal representatives. And so once we finally shut down this abusive uh, investigation, get our property back and see what was in those search warrants, which, by the way, the ACLU and Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press have filed applications for, then there needs to be a criminal investigation into the lies told to our federal law enforcement and get to the bottom of that. And that is relevant to how the Biden administration is weaponizing the DOJ and how powerful lawyers in New York City were able to call up the DOJ and simply run roughshod over the protections of the First Amendment, the Privacy Protection Act, DOJ regulations, and common law protecting journalists. Tucker, as you pointed out, so what if the property was stolen? From the beginning of this case, the DOJ knows that it is perfectly legal for journalists like James O'Keefe from Project Veritas to run with stolen property and publish it. It's protected by the United States Constitution and the United States Supreme Court. So this should never happen again to any journalist of any political persuasion, Tucker. No, of course not. And I'm, I'm waiting for the first brave reporter to ask the question that must be asked to Joe Biden, which is, why did you shower with your daughter in a way she described as not appropriate, in a way that she believes made her sexually compulsive in later life? Why don't you explain what that means? I think we have a right to know. Harmeet Dillon, I appreciate all the work you do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tucker. That part, Stephanie. Um, I see what folks are saying. Right here, here's, here's part of the diary. Um, I believe I got the whole diary. Uh, let 
Breaking DOJ confirms Ashley Biden's diary is real by prosecuting the person who stole it. Fact, Joe Biden inappropriately showered naked with his underage daughter, Ashley. That's a crime. And his diary pages 67 and 68. I got a copy of the diary. I was so afraid of him coming in the shower with me that I've waited until late at night to take a shower. Wow. Um. <laughs> see, one thing about me, I, I don't play games. So let's see what this is about. Point, and I don't mean to. I, I don't want to have to get Secret Service involved in this, right? Because it just is. It, it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, I am Ashley Biden. It is my stuff. So if you could just skip all of that over, I would really appreciate it. I know you sent a picture to my husband with a camera <clears throat> and mm -hmm. a few other things that are mine as well. So that would be really great. Where is a good place uh, for him to meet you? Th point and i don't mean to i i don't want to have to get secret service involved in this right because it just is it, it's a whole process mm -hmm. um but you know i i am ashley biden it is my stuff so if you could just skip all of that over i would really appreciate it i know you sent a picture to my husband with a camera oh. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. a few other things that are mine as well so that would be really great where is a good place well stephanie if he denied it his daughter is telling the facts. I mean, his daughter said it's her stuff. It's true. So how can he deny that? I I'm just trying to figure out. Like, <laughs> I'm such a bad guy for exposing this guy. But let's go here, man. Um... One thing I'm gonna fill you in on is is as I'm gonna play a little bit of this, it'll be up on my Rumble page uh tomorrow. It'll be on my locals page later tonight. But I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of this real quick. I want y'all to see this real quick. Just a little bit. Hello, I'm Conrad Bain. Tonight on Different Strokes, we're starting a special two-part show on a very sensitive and important subject. Now, we urge families, children, and parents alike to watch both of these informative episodes and then to discuss the problem presented, which is of deep concern to all of us. show was very unsettling for me. I couldn't watch it. I didn't want to be around it. I asked him, don't write me in. Please write me out of most of this. Give me a bite, please. Please. Don't just stand there. Help me grovel. <laughs> well, Daddy, I guess he could keep his bike downstairs in the garage. Yeah, Dad, and there's plenty of safe places to ride in the park. And as far as strange people go, I mean, they're everywhere. We've got one living in our apartment. It was unsettling because I had myself gone through that. And watching it happen on the show, it was like reliving that all over again. I was reliving that whole thing all over again. Maybe we better not let your dad know about the bike. In fact, maybe it would be best if you didn't even mention, you know, that you came back here and I gave you all this ice cream before dinner. Why don't we just make it our little secret out? You know something, Mr. Horn. You're sneaky. <laughs> sneaky. Yeah, I'm getting a whole new respect for sneaky. This is what happened in my life. And they didn't know about it. You know something, Arnold? I really like you. I really like you. You and I are going to have a lot of good times together. Okay, so this video is an open secret about 
what happened in Hollywood, and uh, it'll be up on my joint later on. Um, let me look at some of these comments, man. <laughs> Cause see, man, my bro, we and we go at this awful line. So he says, so we cool with grabbing women by the peas and not be and not be held accountable for it. Um, is that what he totally said, or are you going to follow the democratic agenda and take out of context of what he said? Because you know, I can always pull it up. Better yet, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's pull it up so, so people can stop playing with Trump. Let's pull it up. Hold on. Okay, so since people want to put it out there, let's put it all the way out there. First of all, it's a man-on-man -man conversation. And let's see what's been said. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Admitted. Whoa. I did try and fuck her. She was married. It's huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. Yeah. Going either way. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. 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 You can do anything. Pull the hand. Hello, how are you? Hi. I'm going to play it again. Donald Trump talking about a married woman he wants to have sex with. It's a hot mic situation. He has no idea the mic is still on. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and fuck her. She was married. It's huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. Donald Trump talking about when you're a star, you can do anything with women. This is so disgusting. But this also wasn't when he was president either. And when you're a star, they Access Hollywood, the American tour. You know how many years ago that was? See how and see how people try to bring up 
your past and make it seem like it's relevant? You know what I'm saying? That don't compare to Joe Biden sleeping or going into a shower naked with his underage daughter. So tomorrow, Leader Sports Network, I need you to come to the cup. How do Donald Trump having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with his homeboy equates to a old ass man getting in a shower with his own daughter inappropriately? I wait. They let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the put. Grab him by the pussy. Grab him by the pussy. Grab him by the pussy. Then this idiot said, I repeated it just case you missed it. Can you believe that a presidential candidate would talk this way about a woman? Well, wait a minute. If we gonna go this route, right? Y'all know I'm not the one to play with, right? Okay. So we gonna go this route. Watch this. Mm-hmm. You want to go that way? And we going to go this way. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Hold on. I'm... I, I'm I'm gonna get it for you. I'm gonna get this mother for you. <laughs> Cause there's some things that you need to know. Oh. What's his name? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to find it just for you. One thing you ain't going to do. Hold on. Hold on. Cause I need to explain something to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're going to have to explain this one to me. Because I'm going to take you all the way through there. I'm going to take you all the way through there. Cover causing some controversy. This one is about President Obama after he announced his public support for same sex marriage last week. Here's the picture on the cover of Newsweek this week. Eyewitness News reporter Nicole Estefan joins us live in the newsroom now with more on the controversy. Good morning. Newsweek's latest cover said to hit stands in about a week and no doubt it will spawn some conversation here. It declares Barack Obama as, quote, the first gay president. Obama's face is pictured looking skyward, complete with a rainbow halo. The accompanying article analyzes 
opposes the president's backing of gay marriage. Now, Obama said Wednesday he supports gay marriage, reversing his position on a controversial social issue just six months before the November election. The president says after years of conversation, he now believes that gays and lesbians have the right to marry. Meanwhile, the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, Mitt Romney, reiterated this weekend that he believes marriage is between a man and a woman. At least one area politician is weighing in on the issue. People get that this is about human dignity. And I applaud the president for standing up for human dignity. That is an American value. Newsweek's latest issue will be on the stands May 21st. Live in the newsroom, Nicholas Fun Eyewitness News. Hold on. Hold on, we ain't finished. Uh, hold on, 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 and I got it somewhere here. Let's go. Oh, hold on. Hold on, because we about to go there. We about to go there. We about to go there. didn't like you. Oh, man. Um, the truth behind wow. Barack Obama's sexuality. It's We're diving into a topic like that sparked its fair share of chatter and conspiracies, none other than Barack Obama and the speculations about his sexuality. Yep, you heard it right. We're delving into some of the most eyebrow-raising theories that have been floating around. Now, I want to make it clear that we're here to unpack these theories, discuss the claims, and sort through the noise. So grab your curiosity and let's take a closer look at the rumors, the speculations, and the larger picture surrounding Barack Obama's personal life. Barack Obama, the 44th President of the United States, uh -huh. made history as the first African American to hold the office. Mm -hmm. His two terms in the White House were marked by a mix of accomplishments, controversies, and a captivating public persona. His marriage to Michelle Obama has often been held up as a model of love and partnership, but that hasn't stopped speculation about his sexual orientation from cropping up. From his charismatic speeches to his suave demeanor, Obama's public presence has been captivating. Yet amidst his political achievements, certain corners of the internet have been abuzz with claims, suggesting that his relationship with Michelle was more for show than reality. People have for dissected show. his interactions oh, with other wow. men, parsed his body language, and even analyzed his friendships with an eagle eye. In this video, we're taking on the conspiracy theories head on. Did his close bond with his former body man, Reggie Love, fuel rumors? Or was it his association with openly gay individuals that got tongues wagging? We're delving into the supposed lack of romantic stories surrounding his relationship with Michelle and exploring whether those claims hold water. But remember folks, this isn't about perpetuating gossip or making baseless accusations. Okay. We're here to scrutinize the various theories, dissect the context, and provide a nuanced perspective on the matter. So grab your curiosity and let's journey through the labyrinth of rumors and speculations that surround Barack Obama's personal life. It's a wild ride, so let's keep an open mind and separate fact from fiction. Let's dive in. What stirred up this drama all over again is a recent interview with Barack Obama's biographer, David Garrow. Let's rewind the clock a bit. Years ago, Garrow made headlines for revealing alleged details about Obama's private thoughts. Fast forward to now and Garrow's at it again, labeling the former president as insecure as Trump and claiming he's just too lazy to consider serving on the Supreme Court. But wait, what actually caused a frenzy is this? 
Garrow claims that Obama had been writing letters to his ex-girlfriend fantasizing about how much he wanted to make love to a man over and over again. That had a lot of heads turning and a lot of shocked gasps. Now, before we jump down man, the man, rabbit man. hole, let's talk about the details. There are some potential holes in this story that we need to acknowledge. See, these letters supposedly revealing Obama's intimate thoughts come from a past relationship. And get this, the girlfriend who received these letters reportedly sold them to make some cash. Yep, she turned those letters into a money-making venture, and we all know how enticing a story like this can be. She cashed in, and those letters? Well, they're now locked away, inaccessible to the public eye. Now, here's another chunk of the story that might substantiate what Garrow has said. The notion that Michelle Obama might actually be a man. I know it sounds absolutely outlandish, but believe it or not, there's a group of folks out there there who are dead serious about this claim. Now let's start with the basics. Michelle Obama, the former First Lady of the United States, has been a figure of grace, intelligence, and empowerment for many. Her initiatives, speeches, and role as a strong advocate have left an indelible mark on history. But for some, the narrative takes a very different turn. The Michelle Obama is a man conspiracy theory is rooted in a series of supposed clues that theorists have meticulously pieced together. From scrutinizing photographs for evidence of Adam's apple to analyzing her physique, every detail is under the microscope. The theory gained traction in the early days of the Obama presidency and it has only grown since. And hold on, people, because this isn't where the list of supporting factors ends. In an mm. old blurry video of Joan Rivers circulating around the internet, you can hear her imply that Barack Obama is the first gay president of the USA Joan and Rivers Michelle Obama is transgender. Here, watch it for yourselves. Do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman president? Well, we already president? have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, oh. she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, trust me, my jaw is on the floor too. Back in 2012, Newsweek magazine set off quite the stir when they boldly labeled Obama as the first gay president. It was a headline that sent shockwaves through the media and added fuel to the conspiracy fire. We're talking about a magazine cover that grabbed everyone's attention and sparked debates, discussions, and of course the birth of more theories. And then there's the talk about Obama's choice of AIDS. Critics pointed out that he was... Now, like I said before, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't get mad at me. Y'all tried to play with my president, right? So I'm about to give you, I'm about to give you reparation 101. <laughs> see, see, when y'all don't got proof of nothing, I'm going to give you reparation 101. I got the video. Check it out. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Sinclair. In regards to the Obama incident, I flew out of Colorado Springs, Colorado to Chicago on November 2nd, 1999 arriving in O'Hare early in the morning of November 3rd. I went to the Chicago area to attend the graduation of my godson, my best friend's son, from basic training from the Great Lakes Navy Training Facility. I made reservations at the Comfort Inn and Suites in Gurney, Illinois, based solely on the location to the training center. On November 5th, 1999, I hired the services of Five Star Limousine. <coughs> Excuse me. I had hired them both for November 5th and November 6th of 1999. On November 6th, 1999, I asked the limo driver, whose name I now reveal for the first time, Jagir Paramit Mutani, if he knew anyone who would like to socialize and show me Chicago. Mr. Mutani understood that I was looking for someone who knew Chicago and would enjoy socializing. Mr. Mutani said he knew someone who was a friend of his. On November 6, 1999, after picking me up at the hotel in Gurney, and this is significant, Mr. Mutani used his cell phone to make a call. That call was made to then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama to set up an introduction between myself and Senator Obama. Upon arriving at the bar and exiting the limo, Senator Obama was standing next to Mr. Mutani, and I was introduced to Senator Obama by name. Later that evening in a bar which I believe was called Alibis, and I state believe because I have failed so far to get Citigroup to provide the credit card receipts that has the actual name. <clears throat> I mentioned I could use a line or two to wake up. 
Senator Obama asked me if I was referring to Coke, and I stated I was. After stating I was, Obama stated he could purchase cocaine for me and then made a telephone call. This too was significant from a cell phone to a presently unknown individual during which Senator Obama arranged the cocaine purchase. Senator Obama and I then departed the bar in my limousine and proceeded to an unknown location where Senator Obama exited the limousine with $250, which was provided to him by me. Returned a short while later with an eight ball of cocaine, which he gave to me. I did ingest a couple of lines of cocaine, and shortly thereafter, Senator Obama produced a glass cylinder pipe and packet of crack cocaine from his pocket. Obama then smoked the crack cocaine. I performed fellatio on Senator Obama in the limousine during the time Senator Obama was smoking crack cocaine, after which I had the driver take me to my hotel, the Comfort Suites, Gurney, Illinois. The following day, November 7, 1999, Senator Obama appeared at my hotel room unannounced, uninvited, where we again ingested cocaine and I again performed fellatio on Senator Obama. Significantly, both the driver's telephone call to Senator Obama and his call to the drug dealer should appear on the driver's and Senator Obama's cell phone billing statements. In the fall of 2007, September 2007, I contacted the presidential campaign of Barack Obama to request solely that Senator Obama publicly correct his stated drug use record to, flect, <coughs> excuse me, to reflect his use of crack cocaine with me in November of 1999. When I made the first contact, I left with the presidential campaign of Senator Obama a telephone number for the campaign to return my call. The first number I provided was a Texas cell phone number. From the period of Labor Day weekend 2007, through November 18th of 2007. I did provide a total of four different callback numbers to the Obama campaign. As I had moved and I had changed the numbers to, to reflect locally my place of residence at the time. In late September to early October 2007, I received a call from a male who identified himself as a Mr. Young, stating he was calling in regards to calls I had made to the Obama campaign. This first call was, in fact, an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. This first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young, the first call was, in fact, an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. The first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young asked me why I had not asked Senator Obama to disclose the sexual encounters I had with Mr. Obama in 1999. I was shocked as I had never mentioned to the campaign or anyone working for the campaign any sexual encounters as my call was prompted by drug allegations only. The call ended with Mr. Young stating I would hear from someone in a few days. In mid to late October 2007, I received a second call from this Mr. Young, at which time I clearly became aware that this individual was personally involved with Senator Obama rather than just an employee of his campaign. The tone of the conversation had a sexual nature. Mr. Young did not once advise me how he obtained my phone number, which by this time had now changed to a Delaware number. In late October 2007, I received a text message from the gentleman identified as Mr. Young, in which he stated he was intimately involved with Senator Obama and that Obama was discussing with him and his pastor how to publicly acknowledge Senator Obama's drug use in 1999, and that Obama wanted to be sure I had not discussed the sexual encounters or drug incidents with any media at that time. In mid to late November 2007, in another text message from Mr. Young, he advised me that Senator Obama will publicly correct his statement as to the last time he used drugs, and I did not need to concern myself with publicly disclosing it myself. The last contact I had with Mr. Young was in early December 2007, when he made it clear to me that Senator Obama had no intentions of publicly acknowledging his 1999 use of crack cocaine, and that Mr. Young was in fact doing nothing more than milking information from me for Senator Obama's use. I later learned that A. Donald Young, the choir director of Reverend Wright's Trinity United Church of Christ, Obama's now former church, and who was openly homosexual, 
learned that he was murdered on December 23rd of 2007. I have cooperated with the Chicago Police Department on this matter by providing them the telephone numbers I was using during the fall of 2007. And I release them now publicly in the hope that someone may be able to connect the dots between these telephone numbers and Mr. Young. In what I now realize was a naive and uncounseled decision, I posted in January 2008 a video on YouTube where I related the above information regarding my liaisons with Senator Obama in 1999. The response was overwhelming, and I quickly became the recipient of what in hindsight appears to have been a coordinated attack on my character with ever-increasing falsehoods circulating on the Internet. Dan Parisi of WhiteHouse.com received $750,000 from the Obama campaign through David Axelrod's AKP Media and Message One, or Message and Media, I think, to organize an effort to publicly discredit me. When I confronted Dan Parisi with this allegation, he did not deny it. The polygraph results, as misrepresented, were immediately seized upon by the blogger community, and I became the subject of vicious lies about me. I was forced to file a lawsuit in an attempt to stop those lies about me that had been circulating. That lawsuit sought to obtain the proof of what I was saying about my contact with Senator Obama through subpoenas for the identities of the anonymous bloggers so they could be linked to the Obama campaign and relevant records of the cell phone companies to prove the truth of my allegations. To date, though the lawsuit is now over 90 days old, Judge Henry Kennedy has refused to permit the suit to move forward so this evidence may be obtained. In conclusion, in sum, you can discredit my story and then you can make your decision on who should be next president of the United States. The burden is now off of me, as I have told my story without the distortions that, I've been intentionally heap, that have been intentionally heaped on me and what my lawyer tells me is an ad hominem attack. Shoot the messenger so you don't have to hear the message he is bringing. I'm now done. It's for others to find the corroborating evidence of my story by locating the limousine driver, Mr. Mutani, by checking the telephone numbers related to Donald Young and Senator Obama. I leave you with these questions that I've asked of Senator Obama, but in which he, of course, refuses to answer. Who wants to be the next president of the United States has refused to answer. Number one, why won't Senator Obama provide his cell phone numbers and telephone records for all his personal and official cell phones held by him for the time period of no more than November 3rd through November 8th of 1999 when we met? Two, why won't Senator Obama provide his cell phone numbers and telephone records for all his personal and official cell phones held by Senator Obama for September 2007 through December 23rd of 2007, the murder of Donald Young? Three, why won't Senator Obama provide all email communication, both personal and campaign related, to and or from AKP Media and Message from January 18th, 2008 through February 29th of 2008 for Senator Obama, David Axelrod, and David Plew? Fourth, why won't Senator Obama provide proof of all payments made from AKP Media, <clears throat> Obama for America, David Axelrod, David Plew, and Senator Obama's accounts for the period of January 18th, 2008 through February 29th of 2008. On a website that we posted today, LarrySinclair.org, you will find the documents that I have referred to in the statement. Mm. Now, now, what I need you to do tomorrow, Leader Sports Network, is pull up something like that on Trump. And just remember, I'm just getting started. I got documents on documents. I thought the chef was Obama's boo. Nah. Nah. But that man knew too much. But they had to get him out of here. And they covered it up. And, and, and plus, he was a certified lifeguard. So you know he can swim. That's why I say what I say, like, it's so much that I can do, but I don't be wanting to attack this, man. I don't be wanting to attack Obama. You know what I mean? That's not my guy. 
but I don't want to attack him though. I mean, because matter of fact, I'm gonna stop calling him Obama. I'm gonna start calling by his real name, Barry Serrano. So the uh, the biggest conspiracy was him becoming president. Because if I would have known that he wasn't even born on U.S. soil, then I, I wouldn't have voted for that guy. But I didn't vote the second time because the second term is what showed what a, he was in office for. And then, truth to be told, his third term, term is now because he running that thing with a Biden right now. So look, like I say, I'm going to come back tomorrow with a part two because I've been here long enough. I'm about. Y'all be blessed. Re remember, there's no me without y'all. Don't forget, I got the seasonings in. If y'all want the seasonings, hit me up. I go ahead and uh, uh, I go ahead and, and make it for you and send it out to you. Um, it's not expensive. It's not expensive. Not expensive at all. It's ten dollars, ten dollars and twenty five dollars. The twenty five dollars are the bags. The ten dollars are the uh, are, are the uh, are the bottles. But I'm looking to get bigger bottles. I, I want to give y'all more product. That's what I want to do. All right, I'm gone. I see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Let's go. The hell? I said, let's go. Feel more for us to experience. So. Asian too, a Jamaican that let her make me Cajun soup. Got a cougar that calls shorts Daisy Duke. And she said she knew Snoop since 82. Got a classy bitch that always want to go on a date. A professional that let her do real estate. Got a young bitch that always send me sale requests. Got a scammer bitch that call me from the jail collect. Got a LA bitch that think she a Kardashian. Got a New York bitch that give me fashion tips. My Latina from Miami fuck me passionate. But my Atlanta bitch fuck me like she mad and shit. Got a girl with good credit. They got one in debt, one in but debt. the one that's in debt give yeah, me good sex. Yeah. Got a stewardess that only fly planes and jets. Yeah. Got a hippie smoke weed, do shrooms and yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. It's Sean. This shit don't stop. Ooh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm misty brain That gently touches my soul Feels just like fire shut up in me yeah. Simply lose control Let your love just fall like raindrops rain.